if you asked a typical individual of a church, would you say that the church is more wicked today than it was 40 years ago? Many times you get the answer, yeah, I know. There are a lot of churches in this city that have been, that have become pretty wicked for this reason or that reason, but not our church, not our church. No way. We have a lovely pastor and every day he gives, every Sunday he gives a lesson from the Bible. He preaches from the Bible. Not our church. Well, the problem is none of the people in the churches are really looking very candidly, very honestly at what is happening. They are, they are engaging in wishful thinking and that's a very easy snare to get into uh, they as they they don't want to admit the differences they the fact that that many churches of their denomination now their whole music program has changed they brought in all the all the uh, uh, noise and the, and the uh, drums and so on of the modern music uh, they the preachers are preaching differently. They're not preaching from the Bible nearly as much. They're, bring, they're bringing in a, a, a gospel of prosperity, or they're bringing in, and in fact, if you really want to be a successful church today, you better bring in some gospel of prosperity. You better bring in some maybe a little bit of political gospel or whatever. These are the men that really have gained the attention of the world as they uh, as they, uh, uh, their congregations get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. There are congregations that have as many as 20 or 30,000 people, or it's a gospel like a charismatic gospel. I understand in one country in a Africa, they have something like a million members in that church. But what is featured? Not the Bible. What is featured is the fact that, uh, that they can be healed. They have healing services, and they, uh, they have uh, uh, signs and wonders, as, as the pastor talks about visions that he has received, and so on. That's been true in South Korea. Uh, the biggest church that had, for many, many years there was a charismatic church until it was exceeded by the church in Africa. But it's charismatic. It, has, it, is, uh, it is not based at all upon the... Uh, the faithfulness of the Word of God. So you can see that somehow, somehow, something has happened if you're objective. And you can't be objective if you're not a child of God because you're always protecting your own, your own turf. You're, uh, I belong here, and so it has to be a good church. And I'm not going to admit for a minute that it isn't a fine church. Otherwise, why would I be here? That's why I'm here. I really believe it is a fine church. But the fact is that, that uh, yeah, there's a vast difference now than that of 40 or 50 years ago. That wickedness spoken of in Romans 1, God delivered them up as they come right into the churches. And simultaneously, as God has done this, uh, we find, for example, in uh, in uh, 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 Luke chapter eight, verse eighteen. Let's look at that. And then this particular uh, truth is repeated about four times or five times in the New Testament. But Luke chapter Luke chapter. 8, verse 18, 8, verse 18, there we read, Take heed therefore how ye hear, for whosoever hath to him shall be given, and whosoever hath not from him which from him shall be taken, even which he seemeth to have. Now, that's a, that's a terrible statement. How can that be? In other words, God is saying there will be a time when 
there's a certain amount of truth that is still being taught in a group of quote unquote believers. They believe they are true believers. The time will come which it would, even that which they seem to have will be taken away so that they are a, long, a much further away from the truth, yet they believe they still have the truth. That is why 50 years ago, uh, if you went into a congregation, you would find almost no divorced people of any kind because the church is understood. Uh, we're not to divorce. That's a sin. That's a sin. Today, you go into most churches and you'll find all kinds of divorced people and preachers who have been divorced and remarried. It's just an indicator of, of the, the way the sin has developed. And there are some people here in this room maybe who may have been divorced. And you, of course, know because you're, you're really listening to the truth that that was sin and you're so grateful that God is the one who can forgive that sin. But you recognize it as sin. You don't recognize it as just, well, well, that's, that's, that's what happens. Uh, even pastors, noted pastors, are divorced and married again. And it is, it, is, uh, it is because the sensitivity of sin has been taken away. You see what it says here. It has been taken away. Just like we read in Second Thessalonians chapter 2 where it says that God will send upon them a strong delusion when Satan is ruling there. The first time I began to understand that verse, I was horrified by the implication of that, that God is not neutral when we are moving in a world of sin. He is not neutral. He does. He just doesn't say, well, it's up to you whether how sinful you're going to be. But he actually will withdraw his, his uh, hand of, of restriction, of, of helping to keep us uh, uh, at least live with some measure of, of fidelity, the word of God. He actually will take away his hand to allow us more and more freedom to sin and he deadens our consciousness to the nature of sin. This is all happening in the case of the child of God. And this is particularly assisted greatly by the action of Baba, of, uh, of Satan, that Satan is ruling. In the Old Testament, God has used Babylon as a picture of, uh, of, uh, uh, of, Christ, of Satan, as a picture of Satan, and uh, indicating that uh, in the New Testament we read, uh, well, let's, let's look first of all at a, a verse or two in the New Testament. In the New Testament we go to First Thessalonians, or Second Thessalonians chapter 2, Second Thessalonians, chapter 2, and we read there in verse 3, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. It's really talking about judgment day in this context. Except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who is the man of sin? Satan. We know that from, go back to First Thessalonians, chapter 4, verse, uh, no, First John, rather, chapter 4, verse 2, uh, 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 3, rather, First John, chapter 4, verse 3, every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God, but this is that of Antichrist whereof ye have heard that he should come, and even now already is he in the world. And Satan fills the bill perfectly as the Antichrist, who was already existing then and who is coming, uh, who is here in our day, uh, being used of God to prepare the churches in the world for sin. We'll talk more about that a little bit. But in, uh, in uh, 
uh, we we uh, do do find that in verse four it says of Second Thessalonians, who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. This is a message that only the true believers understand, or that uh, uh, there, there may be some who understand it who are not true believers, but at least it, 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 the true believers will understand it, uh, and the temple is the, is the kingdom of God as it's represented by the churches, and Satan is the sitting there. To sit is to rule or have authority. He as God sitteth in the temple, showing himself that he himself is God. That's Second Thessalonians chapter no third uh, yes, Second Thessalonians chapter four. Now in our next study, this is as far as we're going to get, I want to spend a little more time with this uh, this uh, passage or with this matter of Satan ruling. I want to look at some verses in the Old Testament. Uh, that uh, we have not looked at for a long, long time, uh, that also teach us that uh, when we see the abomination of desolation in the holy place, and the world can see this a little bit as they see the, the, the uh, ch uh, churches changing and falling away. Something is happening, but they don't understand. It's because Satan is ruling there, but we can understand that. But now shall we have a word of prayer.